So in the data processing piece, we have the categorization, putting things into the buckets that they belong into. We have the data cleanup. This doesn't read like human text, so I'm going to get rid of it. This is the same content as these other five posts, so we're going to get rid of it. And then to be able to start to apply the some of the cool analysis. Does this read as a positive post or as a negative post? And can I match this article up with these other hundreds of thousands that are out there? And are there any similarities in themes and contextual themes? So being able to look and start to apply measurement. This is how many posts there were on the day, on today for your category. This is the sentiment of those posts. These are the themes of those posts. These are the people that were writing about you most frequently. These start to be the things that we can pull out. And then the delivery of those insights comes through a dashboard, such as we saw for Filterbox um, or for um, Social Thing, any of these, all, any web-based dashboard that can provide the content in a user-friendly way. And then you can get down to more customized reports and services. Here's my business question that I want to answer. Provide me with a report that's going to help me answer that. So Gwen touched on this. I won't hit it all. Some of the paid tools, I do want to just mention a couple of the others. Um, Radian 6 is a big one in there. Visible Tech, Nielsen Buzzmetrics. There really are probably a dozen that we could list there because there's it's a very competitive space right now. But um, in most you know, RFPs that I, in, that I participate in, those three are the ones that I can always count on. Which were the three? Um, Radian 6, Visible Tech, and Nielsen Buzzmetrics. Buzzmetrics was its own company. Nielsen bought them. And, um, What's happened with Umbria? Umbria is still out there. I just because they're part of JD Powers, they don't get invited specifically into a lot of the more social media related projects. Um, they kind of get grouped more into the market research world, which is where we're starting to go more. So we might perhaps encounter them more. So these are free, or these are these are paid. paid. So left is free, oh, and and right are the paid tools. And the, the price for these, it, it really varies from a couple hundred dollars for a search per month to way up for complex reporting and everything else. I mean, there are a lot of clients spending big six-figure um, fees for the services and reporting that they're getting and the tracking. So here's an example of what our dashboard looks like. Um, just to give you a quick idea, on the left here you would see your topics. Maybe if you were in Paramount, you would want your, your, all your big tent pole films. You've got G.I. Joe coming out, and you have um, Star Trek coming out, and you have Monsters vs. Aliens out right now. And then you have a series of films that are also the competitive films being released at the same time as those films. And so you can click on them, and then you'd be able to compare your activity. How many posts per day over a two-month period am I seeing? And what percentage are, are positive, neutral, and negative? And where is the activity happening? Is it mostly in the blogosphere? Am I getting most of my coverage from traditional news? Is most of my coverage coming from Twitter? Where are the conversations happening? You get email alerts, but then the ability to go out to the full post and change it. Yeah? Yes. Uh, well, interesting, we don't, we don't necessarily wait it. Now, we will probably have to start applying some very serious waiting consideration to the Twitter conversation. Twitter's short, and it's intense, it's very opinionated. We do a lot of explaining right now when we go to a, a we, we just did a um, presentation for a bank, and bastard came up a lot in their, um, <laughs> one of the words that were used. And we said, well, keep in mind that, you know, there's a big volume of Twitter conversations. These are very human conversations, um, a slightly younger demographic. And if they felt like using that word <laughs> with some regularity, whether it was in association with their service or anything else, we're going to pick that up. So Twitter is, is going to be really interesting because it can completely dominate the conversation on any given day with the sheer number of posts. How we look at weighting something, though, is more based on an author's credibility and their influence. So going back to the whole link thing, when we talk about people not relying on search engines, but actually going to these other people that I always link to for information, and then going hitting the links that are on their site to the next wave of sites that I'm searching on my journey. 
the authors who have the most inbound and outbound links are the most influential. They have more people linking into them, more people linking out. They're read more, they're viewed more, they're, they have a much bigger voice in social media. So when Gwen puts something out, she's much more influential and much more linked than I am. So she's going to come up as a higher influencer on a search on our site. So when we rank the posts, for example, if you clicked on a day and you got all your posts for that day, Gwen's post would come up before mine, just based on her, her authority. Twitter, because it's so prevalent, comes up really high in our searches. So all of that will be stuff that gets figured out, but it's, it's going to be a really interesting theme that comes through. And up here on the upper right is themes, and those are bubbles of posts that are being grouped together that they're similar. So we had a really funny story I'll share with you for, I think I probably shared it with you, Gwen, um, for Subway. And we were tracking for Subway, and we had a different user interface at the time, which was just a keyword cloud instead of the bubbles. Um, but they were, um, they called up and they said, huh, in our keywords uh, for our themes, porn is showing up. And so we think something must be wrong. And we went in and we looked at all the posts and we said, no, actually, there, there's nothing wrong. But there is a rumor being spread that is alleging that your spokesperson, your spokesperson, Jared, and was involved in a pornography ring. <laughs> so we were able to direct them to the eight blog posts that were alleging that, and their PR team was able to go and nip that in the bud and take care of it. So and different, a very different one was for craft with Crystal Light, and Iraq was showing up in their theme cloud. And they said, Iraq, this must be wrong. There must be some wrong information in there, which always question. There can always be noise in your data, so always question it. Go in and look. So we were able to click in, look at the posts that were talking about Iraq, and it was actually... Um, awesome. So at the beginning, we talked a little bit about social media workflows, and that's actually what we're going to do tonight. Um, we're going to need to be in small groups of between five to six people, so um, we'll have to self-organize and self-actualize on that. Um, and the, basically, a you know, quick overview of, of what we're going to do, actually, is putting into practice some of the topics that Megan just covered and that we covered last week as well. Sort of taking a company, uh, we're going to choose one company from the group, uh, and then building out a social media strategy, essentially, for that company. So um, I do have a guideline to how we're going to work through it, and we do have to kind of uh, move at a fair clip in order to make sure that we cover everything.